Hey, hey, this is Tom from Audio Ordeal, and I'm just going to be going through some of the Reaper themes that I have downloaded to give you a bit of an insight into how customizable Reaper is. Now then, you may recognize this toolbar up here as being not typical in Reaper. This is because I have enjoyed watching the Reaper blog, and I have found that John Tidy, who runs that blog, has done it himself. I really like it. And so I have added my own custom actions and some standard stuff to this top toolbar. Some of it's the same as the default toolbar, but I've also added cool little effects here and also Lice Cap, which is the GIF creation app that Cocos have developed alongside Reaper. And so this adds extra functionality and it's just from every user who wants to create custom actions, they can then assign a button. So what you will be seeing in this video is various themes that I have downloaded. I'm going to apply each one, show you, talk about what I like and don't like, and you will see how it responds to some of my custom edits of just the look of Reaper itself. So I'll talk about the theme that I'm using just now. If we go into options, themes, you will see that I'm using the default 5.0 nitpicky edition. Now this is my favorite theme. It's almost the default theme but with a few things changed. Now what I'll do to start off with is I will show you what the default theme looks like and we can then go through everything. So this is the default theme here. Almost everything is the same, um, a few differences being the meters but pretty much everything looks the same. So if you are using Reaper and you are swaying between different themes. I recommend sticking with the default theme until you know what you're doing. And then if you want to go a bit of an upgrade, go for the nitpicky edition, which is what I had before, which more or less is the same with just a few little cosmetic tweaks on very small things. And most of the time you won't be able to tell the difference. Okay, going on. This is a selection that I've downloaded. This is by no means an all-inclusive of every theme created, but these are just the ones I've been interested in. This one is called Black Mode DVU. Now, I quite like the look of this one, except for the track meters. If we go on to a different view that I've created, this one's a video one. I quite like this. This is just a full screen video editing page. And so it looks quite nice for this. And then I've also created uh, another video with tracking and everything. However, for general track production, I'm not a huge fan of this. If we add in tracks, everything's just a bit black and everything hides away. But for some people that this theme is quite nice, we are gonna obviously skip nitpicky edition because that's what I've shown you previously. Now default 3.0. For many of you, you might recognize this. This is a much older version from Reaper 3.0. I think this looks quite cool, actually. Um, it certainly looks a bit outdated, but it's got a really cool look to it. We can delete tracks, and it still has some of the, the features that the new ones have. So you've got this quite nice grayed alternating track um, background with the ruler. I quite like that. What I don't like is of course the meters and just a bit more of an outdated feel. Going on further, this is one that I do like. This is the default for and with width and without. I'm just going to show you default for it. This is what most producers will be familiar with if they use Reaper because many of us started when Reaper 4 was out. For the older users of Reaper, I feel bad because this is probably the first good looking, truly good looking Reaper theme. Even now this one looks a bit outdated as well, but it is much more similar to what it is currently. And you can see already that there has been some minor improvements to the look, but it's the Reaper 5 one that I think looks best still. Going down, Default 5 Dark, this is one of my favorites. This keeps most of the look of default 5, except it darkens it up, so it's quite nice for nighttime producing. There's a few little cosmetic tweaks like panning and volume having a initial on them. But overall, this is quite a nice one, and it's just got a bit of lightness to it compared to the previous one, which was just all black. I like this a lot, 
and if you've got tired eyes it can be nice for a bit of a rest. Dark Extended, more or less the same. My screen's not big enough to really account for how it should look. Going on Function 1.1, this one interests me a lot. This again is quite similar to Default 5. However, it's just got a quite sleek, minimal look to it. It's one I don't use often, however, I like the look of it and this is one of the ones I show off to people when they're asking about themes because it looks sleek and for many people it will be very much what they're looking for. The whole look of it is really nice, the, especially with the panning, it's got nice colour to it and the meters are all fine. The one issue with this is the volume knobs are pretty tiny and when you reduce the track size they disappear altogether. I quite like having quite a small track at the side because it just allows me to have full focus on the main editing and main tracking. So let's keep going through what I have. Live, now this might be recognisable to some, this one resembles Ableton a bit more and if we insert some items, the whole vibe is just very Ableton. We can colour the tracks if we wanted. The thing with this one is it's got no borders around any of the icons and so it just kind of looks like everything's smudged onto a grey background. It's not one I like using. I've never usually got into Ableton, although it is something I'd like to try out again soon. But for people who have moved on from Ableton, this is perhaps one of the options that you might like to look at. Pro Tools. This one looks really, really cool. It's quite a good emulation of what Pro Tools looks like. And so for people who come from Pro Tools to Reaper, this is a really good system to use. You get the whole looks of everything. Obviously it's all movable, but I'd say it looks quite like Pro Tools. Obviously I've got some of my own custom toolbars and stuff moved around. So it won't look exactly like Pro Tools, but certainly on the default look of this um, theme, it's gonna look pretty great. So this is another default five nitpicky edition one. And the only difference really is it's dark, but it is the nitpicky edition of a dark theme. So this again is really nice and for many users it's probably favoured just due to the, you know, tired eyes and everything. Here's another Ableton one. This one I like a lot more than the live one. This resembles Ableton quite significantly more. And I like this look a lot. It's very clean, it's very simple, and you still have the icons with borders. And I just think the whole thing looks quite a bit nicer. This might be one to try out if you are a fan of Ableton. However, there are a few things in Reaper that just work quite a bit differently from Ableton. So if you are coming across and you're having struggles learning Reaper, it may well even be better to use the Reaper default theme so you're not stuck in those, in just that kind of visualization muscle memory of Ableton because one or two things do work quite significantly differently. I wouldn't say there's a better way of doing it, it's just a very different way of doing it. This one's quite cool, Reborn. This looks a bit more retro but with quite, it's still quite a clean sleek look and it's very nice you've got the loops and I really like this kind of brownie gold color it makes it look a bit vintage so this one's quite nice to use as I say I mostly stick with the default 5 nitpicky one but it's sometimes nice to just scroll through them and sometimes just having a different look can give you different inspirations with tracks this one's snow this again is one of my favourites, it's one that I don't use much, but this is very similar to the Nitpicky Edition combined with the live one. This is very, very sleek, you still have the borders for the toolbar so it's not just like a big black or grey expanse, and it's a very clean looking, um, very clean looking theme and it allows you to get through what you need. If we, I'll just trim that to... Okay, one issue with this theme then. I thought this was not trimmed against the timeline, the grid bar, but it seems to be trimmed right up against it. So everything does seem to overlap, which would cause me hours of frustration. You can see this is one I've not used because I've not identified that before. 
Um, though I do like the look of this. This overlap would drive me nuts. So let's keep going. Classic four. This comes a bit familiar to anyone who is into old looking DAWs. I personally cannot stand this and lots of respect to people who had to work through this. This whole look is just a mess. It looks like a badly made software. And finally, we are going to look at Classic One. Again, this is pretty much the same, slightly different here and there, but this whole thing just looks like a very, very outdated bit of software. I was probably still in my primary school when this was running and looking default. I am so glad the world has moved on from these. It's so, so nice. So, another thing to point out, you've got stuff like Theme Tweaks, Element Finder and Theme Helper. All of these can be very useful and there are plenty of ways if you're interested in designing your own theme. Sometimes people like to do that and sometimes people like to just take a theme and tweak it themselves. I like to play about with the layouts, especially I have F7 to F10 on my function keys assigned to different looks. So as I showed you, F10 being the video tracking and video editing, that is how I edit my videos here. F9 being more of a cinema view, so this whole screen becomes the video viewing. F8 is just a full screen tracking, so this removes all the track volumes and stuff. This just allows you to focus purely on arrangement. But my default working environment is on my F7 key, where I've just got the tracks down the side, master on this side, and obviously the toolbar is at the top with a couple of extra extra little features. For example, I can click this and it adds different grid lines. I can set it to triplets. John Tidy in the Reaper blog does a great job of demonstrating some of these, so check that video out. He will show you pretty much anything you'd ever need to know with Reaper. I really love his channel and he deserves a massive, massive thanks from everyone. He's also on Patreon if you want to so support him because he is the person that deserves pretty much all the glory for people learning and getting great at Reaper. So that was just a brief overview of some of the themes I like playing about in, some of the themes I've downloaded and I don't use. There are plenty more out there, you can get them all on the Reaper stash and you can look through them all. They can be sorted by popularity or newest date. A lot of the newer ones are the best because they are the most modern looking, however there are some awful ones. Some have like wooden panels which I really don't like for a computer environment. But some people might prefer the slightly more real life looking theme. And so this all kind of combines in and allows you to get whatever environment you want in Reaper, you can have it. If you come from a different DAW, you can have it. It's fine. This is why Reaper is one of the best DAWs out there because it's just so open-ended, so customizable, and pretty much anyone is able to tweak it, change what they want, and they're just able to make this into their own home because this is where a lot of people spend many hours of the day working. And so why not make it look exactly how you want? It's just like redesigning your office. So this is the creative freedom that I like to have even though I've ended up sticking with a pretty much default look, just having the freedom to do this is so different from many of the other DAWs out there where they are pretty much locked and you can't tweak anything. So thank you very much for watching this video. I would really love you to give a like and subscribe if this is stuff that interests you. I talk about production and, and stuff like programming in Reactor and I'm going to show various other production tips and tricks. I'm also on Patreon if you want to give me a follow or even better, give me a dollar or two just as a bit of support to help me make more videos that would be much appreciated and if you have any comments or any ideas on what your favorite theme is or what theme you'd like to see put it down in the comments below and we'll definitely get some more videos on this if people want them thank you very much for watching